does the edge mean to you? If you asked me a decade ago, I would have looked at you funny and inquired if we were going hiking in the mountains. <laughs> edge computing today is more important than ever before. The edge can now be near. It can be far. It can even be intelligent. Even better, we can now do machine learning on the edge. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Edge machine learning is a great way to allow embedded devices to run applications that can collect sensor data and locally process that data. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Clark Jarvis from Infineon and I explore how the Imagimob Studio Modus Toolbox software, and PSOC and Oryx microcontrollers can help you develop a custom machine learning on the edge application from scratch. We also investigate how the Imagimob Studio can help you easily develop and deploy AI and ML models, and the benefits that the PSOC 6 Artificial Intelligence evaluation kit will bring to your next machine learning on the edge application design process. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Clark. Thank you so much for joining me. Yep. Thank you, Amelia. So we're talking about solutions for machine learning on the edge today. But before we go much further, can you explain what exactly it means to have machine learning on the edge? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, we see things like artificial intelligence, right? And that's certainly become a very big part of our lives. And, and we can see that becoming a big part of our future. But we're looking at a specific subset of that, which is machine learning and even more reduced machine learning on the edge, where we're able to do detection of information on these small, low-power, low-cost devices where I can detect information right there on the device, make decisions on it all local to the device. And a big key to that, and you'll see me reference this quite a bit throughout this discussion, is going to be the quality of the machine learning model, that ability for this small device to be able to make these decisions and a lot of that is going to really come down to two things. One, I need to have a very good model. So how do I create that model? And then the other important aspect of machine learning on the edge is the fact that everything is done locally. And so I'm not shipping a bunch of data up to the cloud or other type of services. This is going to give me some huge benefits in terms of lower latency. I can make that decision very quickly. It's going to be much more reliable. I'm not relying on other services or hope I have a good connection to push a bunch of information out somewhere else. And along with that comes then privacy because I have that data all locally. I'm making the decisions locally. Of course, comes with reduced bandwidth. And then all of that works to achieve a lower cost because I have a very constrained device that's able to do some powerful stuff all local and on very small devices. Fantastic. Now, Clark, what kind of applications would be a good fit here? Yeah, and there's sky's the limit types of applications, but there's a couple that we see a particular traction in our industry, in the market today. A couple of those are things like audio classification, where I can have a device record vocal sound and be able to say, you know what, that is somebody coughing or somebody snoring, a baby crying, a siren, things like that, and I can make decisions based on the specific audio that this device is picking up. There's other things like predictive maintenance where these machine learning devices actually know what state my machine is in and it can detect anomalies. It can say, you know what, something is not quite working like it should. It's almost like having somebody you know, have their ear, or have their hand on your refrigerator 24 seven saying, hey, something's not quite right there let me go alert or make some decision based on those small, minute changes. We've got things like gesture recognition, so I can do have a more hands-free experience when I'm interacting with the device. Uh, signal classification is another one, and this is a pretty broad topic, but uh, you can get down into things like, how do I detect an arc fault for doing a you know, kind of more secure handling of electricity? So really cool things. 
And then there's other things dealing with motion, ones we hear a lot of, of is maybe fall detection. Is there an elderly or something happens that I can detect a critical issue where somebody fell or there's an accident like that? So lots of cool types of use cases that all can happen on these small devices. Again, without that data ever needing to leave the device until you need to actually broadcast or do something with it. Okay, so today, Clark, it is more important to get a product to market as fast as possible. So can we do this with a machine learning on the edge application? Hey, you bet. And it is, right? That time to market is key. And as I mentioned before, to make machine learning really successful, the other aspect of it is having that good quality model. So Infineon provides what we refer to as ready models. And these are going to be models that are ready to go out of the box. They're high quality models. Uh, several that are available today are doing things like cough detection, siren detection, snoring detection, baby cry detection, and with several more currently in the progress. Other acoustic events dealing with things like, is there a particular alarm going off or is there a commotion? Is there some type of public safety event happening that it can detect and make decisions on. Then we can also get into some of the radar type applications where we can detect what is the surface that the radar is picking up. So we think things like the robot vacuums, am I on a hard surface, a carpet surface? And we mentioned before the hand gesture recognition so I can detect various gestures completely hands-free. So those are the type of ready models that are available today for the Infineon PSOC 6 devices, as well as some that are coming soon. And to get a product to market very quickly, where all a developer needs to do is then add in some of that business logic. Like, what do I do with that decision that's made and get a product out very quickly with a high quality production ready model? So, do you guys offer options for a more customized solution? Certainly, right? And this is going to be much more the traditional flow of developing an application, particularly as it applies to machine learning. So, Infineon has two main products that I'll talk about here. The first is ImagineMob Studio, and the second is Modus Toolbox. And this is going to create a seamless model development and deployment environment where I can use the ImagineMob Studio to develop the machine learning itself. And it's got various capabilities and tools ingrained into it, all about making machine learning development easier for creating the edge AI models. Then you get to the actual development side of it. So I've got that model. I now need to go create applications around it and get it to do things. And Modus Toolbox is Infineon's modular development ecosystem. And these two pieces paired together provide a platform to go create and deploy these machine learning models to devices like the PSOC 6, which is an ultra low power dual core architecture, or even the recently announced PSOC Edge devices which is Infineon's next generation of machine learning enhanced products. Additionally, there are workflows available for the RX TX3 devices from Infineon that pair the ImagineMob Studio and the RX Development Studio together. Fantastic. Now, can you walk me through the development flow for both of these solutions? Absolutely. So at a high level, we start with collection of data, right? We've got to have a good set of data that we're going to work with. So we get to use real hardware to collect and effectively stream that data into ImagineMob Studio. And once that data is available, we can do analysis on it. We can go create and train the model itself. And then with that model, we then start to optimize it to get it appropriate for running on these small edge devices. So what now with a optimized model, we move over into the development workflow side of Modus Toolbox, where we get to add the business logic, right? When I make this decision, when I have some type of an inference that's made with this machine learning model, I get to go do something with it. And then after that, deploy it to the product to get it back onto the hardware into an actual product. Okay, so Clark, what are the benefits of using ImagineMob Studio? Yeah, and this really comes down to, as we discussed several times, we've got to have a high quality model. And part of that is the, the ability to be able to collect valid data and then to be able to analyze it and properly. And so that's going to be a couple of the things that are critical about Imagine Mob Studio is being able to collect and annotate so that I can refer to it later. I can annotate this data to say, this is what this event was happening. And that's going to feed into the training that happens later. 
we can manage the data. Do I need additional data sets being brought into my application or do I need to somehow process and filter the data to make it more suitable for training my model? And then it comes to the actual model creation itself, where I'm actually building and training the model so I have a high quality model. And to ensure that that model is what I expect it to be, there's various tools and capabilities to be able to evaluate, is this the best fit model? Are there other optimizations that I can make to it to ensure that it is going to meet my needs? And then once we have that model, a critical part of this, particularly as we talk about these edge devices, is making sure that I can optimize it, I can quantize it, I can get it to fit into my particular use case, into my particular device without sacrificing performance. And so those are gonna be the critical features and capabilities that come as part of the Imagine Mob Studio development platform. As we look at Imagine Mob itself, so Imagine Mob is an Infineon technology company, and it is Infineon's solution for being able to easily develop and deploy AI ML models. And there's a big key aspect to this. We talked a lot about the privacy of the data on the device itself, but that same philosophy extends to the product in Magic Mob Studio as well, where your data is your data. You own that. You own the data that you collect and the abilities that you have to be able to process it, to create models around it, and it's not utilized or shared with any other applications. You're not even locked in to Infineon's own ecosystem. You have the ability to take your own models and to be able to deploy them on whatever hardware fits for you, whatever hardware is supported, and including very cross-platform support. And you can expand on your own or with us. There are Python-based scripts that allow you to integrate and enhance with additional pre-processing, filtering, and various functions to manipulate the data so that it's suitable for your application. You can develop your own blocks for processing it for your own IP, and it's entirely yours and able to integrate into these tools, as well as take advantage of the new features that Infineon is including. Uh, we've talked a lot about ML, so now we even get to explore the idea of using machine learning to develop machine learning applications with ML-assisted labeling, augmentation tools, and many more. I love that. Okay, so Clark, if my audience is ready to get started, where should they go first? Yeah, so one of the cool things that we have now is the introduction of a new PSOC 6 Artificial Intelligence Evaluation Kit, or AI Kit. And this is a cool, small form factor development platform. It can allow customers to easily evaluate these machine learning platforms that we've been talking about, of working with Imagine Mob Studio, of working with Modus Toolbox, and being able to test out and deploy some of the ready models or some of the different code examples that we offer that can be used to see exactly how machine learning works. Now, the board itself has got some really cool features. It's all about being able to collect various data. So it features a PSOC 6 microcontroller, but has radar sensors, acoustic sensors, pressure sensors, as well as motion IMU sensors from Bosch. And the board itself all targeted around making it very easy to develop, to prototype with it, to be able to expand it to add in additional sensors or additional things that you would like to sense and collect data on to build your model. And so you have all kinds of different target use cases that can be supported with this particular board. There's certainly the sound detection. We talked a lot about being able to detect sirens, cough, snore, baby crying, as well as motion detection, present detection. Am I in a room or not in a room? Counting various assets that come through a particular sensor, and then getting back into the gesture control with using customized radar solutions, or even combining these things together and looking at more of a sensor fusion type detection. Fantastic. Okay. So does Infineon have any additional resources that would help my audience on their way? Yeah, so what I would recommend is we look at the PSOC 6 AI kit that we just talked about. So we'll have links to be able to purchase that. Uh, going in and registering for an, an Imagine Mob Studio account, and then downloading the Modus Toolbox software and using those three together to create some really cool machine learning on the edge applications. There's also an integration guide available on imaginemob.com slash Infineon and the QR codes here in the presentation. 
Fantastic. Well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me, Clark. Absolutely. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.